I'd like to call the meeting to order and uh, review and approve the minutes of our meeting of February the 25th. What is your pleasure? Will be accepted as read as okay. submitted. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Uh -huh. Aye. And I abstain because I was not at that meeting. So. Mm -hmm. Motion carried. Uh, residents and citizens. I guess we don't have any residents and citizens. Uh, yeah, we got more here. I just had a question that uh, I should know the answer to this. There was a meeting scheduled last Tuesday in Sam Elliott about security, and it was canceled because I guess the weather. It's been rescheduled for this Thursday, and I noticed there was a addition to what I noticed that this is an important meeting and uh, I've, whether it's related or not I've noticed the Hunter North people walking around the place is, what, what, what's going on? Um, I think it's safe to say that there are concerns by some of the people, some of the residents about security in the building and so George the property manager has um, convened the meeting in order to talk to people about uh, about what their concerns are and the steps that are being taken. Including is this something new or is it just... I think it's been sort of gathering steam over the last two to three months mm -hmm. and um, has been getting increased, he's been getting increased concern and so okay. we thought that um, you know, it'd be good to bring everybody together and, and share concerns and then be able to, um, you know, work on some strategies to help people. I and mean, one of the, the big things is, you know, please don't let people into the building that you don't know. You know, just because they're making well, yeah. you, you know, buzzer <laughs> doesn't mean you should let them in. Yeah. So those kinds of things. Is uh, that part of the new front door keys to the building? Yes. Kitchen? To all tenants by the end of April. Yep. Although we we were working on the new front door keys anyway because there's a lot of keys out there. There are a lot of keys out there. And we don't feel like we have really. I mean, no, that was a timely. That was yeah. Good. After that 31 problem. years, there are a lot of keys yeah. out there. And also, these keys will be cheaper to replace. So that's even better. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what I don't know, Mayor, if you have anything to add, but that's no, really that, what it's about. Yeah. It, In business and uh, resident interest, uh, we'll go right out start of our agenda right here. In your, in your packet, you notice that there's a proposal for going smoke-free uh, in the property areas, and <coughs> I'd like to bring that up right now and see if anybody has any questions or any any comments. We got a comment that I've got Tom, you've been one of the people working hard at this. Right? Well, that's what it's all about. Heidi and whoever it was on the staff that helped her did a heck of a job of interviewing the people there and collating the results in a, in a number of spreadsheets. And, uh, mm -hmm. I don't think there's anybody left who will have any kind of complaint that they weren't consulted. <laughs> so my, my uh, kudos to Heidi and whoever it was, I don't know the name, but I know she had help. They did a great job. I think it was Jen. Oh, great. Right. Well, this is the proposal. Um, Heidi, uh, Tom, and Chris Conley have yep. worked, uh, met often, and I think had uh, fairly candid and spirited discussions about this and come up with this as a proposal. Um, if you approve, um, we would start this process, which is um, going to take some time, mm -hmm. but I think is one that um, ha it has a lot of um, sort of transparency in it. A lot of additional meetings, plenty of notification, grandfather clauses. I think they really didn't didn't forget anything. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know uh, Jack has been working with Heidi and uh, George on gazebos and uh, structures. So mm -hmm. they've done a lot of work. And Christine is the sash. Uh, coordinator is working on smoking cessation. 
So they, they, you know, I I liked it because I thought, you know, they put they put everything together into mm -hmm. a whole a very um, thoughtful, uh, comprehensive program. The thing that I liked about it is that it involved all of our developments, all of the pieces mm -hmm. that we had: Samuel Elliott, Case Court, Melrose Terrace, Ledgewood Heights, Moore Court. Just nice that every every one of one of our complexes. Uh, Mm -hmm. was taken into consideration. One minor thing, it isn't really part of it, but it's related, is we need to have some sort of a, a, pro, a policy on butts. On what? Cigarette butts. Oh. And who cleans them up or where they put them? Or maybe we just purchase a couple of urns for the smoking areas or something like that. Well, I think we'll, we'll definitely be getting the smoke, yeah. the smoking tray. Yeah, those crazy looking yeah. things with yeah. the long decks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that yeah. would make sense. Well, that's what we get and and butts are any are just the same as any kind of litter. So we yeah. don't we generally don't permit people to litter. So. Well, <laughs> just take a look around the property. I know. <laughs> they I'm are pleased. there. Yeah, I'm pleased to see that uh, even though we say that we're not going to limit smoking at Ledgewood Heights and War Court. There is a limit on smoking around, I can't see Chris, uh, uh, the playground, the laundry room, and the vicinity of the laundry room, and the bread shed. So that mm -hmm. uh, we're recognizing that uh, cigarette smoking is, is uh, dangerous to the health, particularly of children. Yeah, I thought that was good. You're not looking for any sort of a vote from the board? This evening on the proposal here, do you? Yes, if the board is comfortable with this and would adopt it as the process that we will use for going smoke free, then we can start implementing this. Um, mm -hmm. I'm looking for a motion, I would so move. Motion has been made. I will second. Is there a second? Yes. Motion has been made and seconded. Do we have any further discussion? I just would comment, even though Chris Connolly isn't here this evening, she was part of this yes. committee. I was kind of hoping like that Chris it. would be here. She would be mm -hmm. wonderful. Yeah. You know, she was the one that was very boisterous at the very, very start of this. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm sorry that she's not here. But, uh, but we know her voice has been heard. Yes, that's correct. Mm -hmm. Hearing no uh, more as far as discussion goes, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. So we have started thank the ball. Thank you to everybody that worked yes, on Yes, thank you. Yes. Tom and Chris, yep. who's not here, and Heidi, and all of her little elves that helped her. <laughs> Are we sending anyone to the uh, smoke free housing that's clear the air meeting in Ruffin? Yes, we are. Uh, I noticed that too. Uh, I know that. I think Heidi is going, and I think Christine Hazard is going as well. So I think there are a couple of folks that are going. Excuse me, can I be able to speak up? There's a little acoustic oh, sure. issue here, and I don't get the names of your organizations. Very Thank good. You. Did you yes. hear what you do? <laughs> yeah, especially the one you just said. The uh, smoke free housing, let's oh. clear the air. A meeting in the Rutland. Other and we have two staff. <coughs> and meeting where? Rutland, Rutland, Rutland. 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 Mm -hmm. Sorry. But it's a surprising how many other organizations are doing the same thing. We've been wrestling with this for so long, and, but we're not alone. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody else is doing the same thing. So that's good to know. So that date is Wednesday, May twenty second. Franklin Conference Center up in Rutland, Vermont. So, and we will have representation there as, mm -hmm. as well. Good. Um, we had uh, some other information in the packet right here on this orange piece of paper right here. <coughs> it was Heidi's. The property manager, um, and <clears throat> and George Canfield. Does 
Does anybody have anything? Uh, that's on this one sheet here. Yeah. May I ask for a clarification under Samuel Elliott appointed apartments? Uh, mm -hmm. sir, the the last line nomination. Oh. That's the nomination process for the resident association okay. officers. So one, if no one has any questions on that, we continue on then. Um, Housing Choice Voucher Program, Shelter Plus Care. I've got some questions on it, but they can be handled down below on the impact of sequestration. Mm -hmm. Just this afternoon, we were told that one of our public housing family self-sufficiency folks has been a job. No. That's great. Yeah, great. Great. I'm sorry, I didn't get that. One of our family self-sufficiency participants in public housing got a job, and we found out about that today. Anything on the... On the sash, um, that we'd like to share with everybody. Two items, Christine and uh, Christ mostly Christine and some of my time have uh, we've been spending with the folks from Scutney where. Uh, we are helping them start a full SASH panel, which will start May 1. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are uh, hiring for a half panel here in Redwood, <coughs> extension of our existing SASH panel. And um, I just wanted to note that uh, you have a uh, re report from the Acting Resident Services Coordinator, and um, she is going great guns on resident service activities. Great. Okay. Now the Section 8 on, uh, on the yellow sheet of paper we have right here. Um, <coughs> Section 8's, the Shelter Plus Care. Anything, anything there, Chris, that you want to report out on, uh, different than what we've got here? No, just to note that we are working with the human service agencies in the community on um, um, responding to a uh, request for proposals for this family supportive housing program which the agency has proposed in order to reduce the number of nights that homeless folks are put up in motels. So David has been working with them and we've um, crafted a uh, change in our transitions to housing program so that we can use half of the um, housing units funded by that for this other program. The Family Supportive Housing Program has funding for case management services but not housing. And in Brattleboro we were faced with the dilemma of how do you fund for housing when Nobody has extra housing money. So we've um, put this together and we're working with the Winston Prouty Center, which is the lead agency and the other agencies. Um, the proposal is due at the end of this week. A week and a half or so. Yeah. 
That property redevelopment uh, manager here, we've got redevelopment of Melrose developer mm -hmm. RFQ timeline. We have, uh, what's the timeline? Well, that? I had hoped that I would bring in the timeline, and I didn't quite get to it. Uh, but under the uh, request for qualifications, we should be bringing you a recommendation on a development partner at your April meeting. Very good. So we're at the April meeting. Yep. And Marshall has agreed to help us read the submittal. Well, your disappointment is not really as great as mine. I will. <laughs> but that's okay. Yeah. I can't complain. It's just all the classes. <laughs> <laughs> That's good to know. It's mm -hmm. progress on that, too. Yeah. Now, the impact on the federal sequest sequestration. Sequestration. Sequestration, yes. Six times. <laughs> <in> <laughs> six. <laughs> yes, it does. It does. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Public health in Section 8 yeah. Yeah. program. Um, we will talk about more specifics with respect to both programs in terms of personnel and contracts um, in executive session, but I wanted for public purposes to be able to have a discussion uh, mm -hmm. with you about uh, what, how this is going to impact both programs and um, our budget is uh, actually built around um, a lower probate proration in public housing than we're going to end up with, we think. Um, mm -hmm. Not by much, but by a little. Um, so that's Probably the good news. At this point. Yeah. That's is that because we were determined a high performing housing authority? No, 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 no that's because been... our crystal ball on where they would end up um, okay. was a little murky. <laughs> <laughs> Very murky. <laughs> it was sort of like anybody's <laughs> guess. Um, so our budget is tight, but um, doesn't, we, we were able to anticipate, you know, to put this into our budget. And we're um, fortunate in that manner in that because other pro other housing authorities with um, earlier fiscal year and sort of beginnings, however you want to think of it, uh, those that aren't March have, you know, built a budget that they're already in that's mm. going to be hit with this. So. Mm. Last year they took back their reserves, this year they're doing this, it's just really unfortunate. Well, it was nice that you could give us a little bit of a, a start on it anyway, is you know, on, on that white piece of paper mm -hmm. that you had in your packet. Yes. I think that is at least get us thinking about it. Yeah, and I, I think um, I put on your, um, in front of your, place of uh, two resolutions that David and Mary and I have been working on. Um, and we can either, you can either, we can review them generally right now and if you're comfortable, adopt them now or wait until we've had a discussion if you need um, more specific information in terms of um, not uh, participants, but impact on a certain landlord, for instance, we would, we would want to do that in an executive session because this is going to affect those contracts. Mm -hmm. um, but generally, um, it's our recommendation that we reduce our payment standard to 90%. And in doing that, that we also, um, and if you can read David's, uh, 
scrawl here on the other one, you will see that. I think that, that that's why he was here. Yes. To that in, <laughs> in, lowering, in lowering the payment standard, we also um, want to limit the rent burden um, to no more than 50% for any individual family or individual in the program. Um, there are some, there are not, I think it's 10 at the most, um, that would be affected by this. So I thought that was a good suggestion that we say, okay, we're going to lower it. Yes, it is, it means the tenant will pay more, uh, but we will cap that at 50%. Now, is this going to affect virtually all of our tenants? Yes, it will. With, it, this is for everybody that is in, we have two programs, the tenant-based program and project-based program. Project-based being AWR and Upper Story, where the subsidy is in the building, not with an individual. We are only talking about the tenant-based program, and that's the program where we have the most participants. So everybody in that program would be affected. And by how much, I mean, it's, it, they, these two have been putting together enormous spreadsheets with um, all of our participants, and it just really ranges. I, mean, there's, mm -hmm. you know, I think, David, that we ended up with an average of 39%. I, yeah, but it, it, <coughs> the, the, the rent burden was 39 percent, but some people were still at like 25 percent, and others yeah, like 60. Get the right. cap. Yeah. Yeah. Excuse yeah. me, yeah. is this uh, percentage of income? This yes, yes. percentage yes. of okay. income mm -hmm. that they would be paying towards rent. And so this, this go ahead. This is only the rental assistance program we're talking about, okay. not public housing. So in other words, we're talking about Section 8. Exactly. People renting from private landlords, yep. or whom we subsidize part of that rent. Correct. Precisely. Or the nonprofits. Yes. The individual tenant based program. Yep. So I don't know if you have other um, general questions about that. Um, We've, we do need to uh, request a waiver from HUD in order to make this effective. Um, you know, we say immediately, but it really would be uh, if we can get it through and approved by HUD, the earliest would be June 1. Mm -hmm. Because there's notice requirements that we have to do, and we obviously need to be doing a lot of administrative work. Mm -hmm. Letting people know. Well, in our packet, it was explained that we have two ways to go: either uh -huh. reducing the fair market rental, uh, reducing our portion of that to ninety percent, or offering fewer vouchers. And I believe I like this idea better than cutting back on the number of vouchers we can issue. Uh, it's going to spread the pain a little more equitably in that uh, uh, if we went the other way, I believe they saw somewhere it would be five to ten vouchers, we would not be able to issue under the new guidelines. It's different. No. What happens, we have really, because we've done everything that is recommended to do mm -hmm. to reduce the cost, and we're still over mm -hmm. the amount they're giving us, our administrative fee is still really too low. Mm -hmm. We've, I mean, Mary has really worked on that budget. <laughs> um, and it's too low. Um, so what we asked in resolution number two is that in the event that we still need to reduce costs, the only option we have is to remove families mm -hmm. from the voucher program. Mm -hmm. And that means that we would be taking people yeah. off the program. My point is, we don't, going want to. To. we don't want to, but we yeah. may have, have to, to yeah. if, yeah. let's say we, we 
write a good letter and we make our arguments to HUD about going to the 90% and for some reason they say no. The only option that we have mm -hmm. is to remove people from the voucher program. And that's the, that is we will clearly be telling HUD that in our waiver. Mm -hmm. But um, we have to have that as a policy adopted by the board so that we can use that. Or with the sequestration, we will literally be out of money. Mm -hmm. We don't, we aren't we getting enough to run mm -hmm. the program at its current size. And its current size is almost, well, it's 32 vouchers lower than what HUD, where HUD says we should be. Mm -hmm. They say we should be funded to have 187 vouchers in the community, and they've only been giving us funding for 155, and that's been a little over budget. Mm -hmm. yeah. So with these cuts, mm -hmm. there's no way that we can do this if they yeah. don't let us lower this payment yeah. standard. Yeah. It's not like we have a Daddy Warbucks in the back room that can write a check for us. We have, we have to make good business decisions. Well, we want to pay the landlord. You know, just a yeah, little thing. Like <laughs> so we have. Right I don't now, blame them either. Yeah. You know, we have right now about 155 vouchers. We do. About so, no, that's a little more than we have, isn't even it? less. Yeah, we have about 145 and. Seven four seven four so one forty five one forty six housing choice yeah. vouchers currently okay. that that come out of our pocket there are mm -hmm. seven we administer but other housing authorities give us the money for them. In a so well. worst case situation, we would maybe lose as many as five. No. no, we would need to get we would depending on when this happened, we might have to take back fifteen vouchers. 15. So uh, what we're, it'll be the oldest ones first. Yes, that's what we're that, recommending. That's, that's our proposal. First in, first off. Mm -hmm. Is this voucher program Section 8 specifically? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Section 8, tenant-based voucher program. I know that this last, this last month here, I signed the checks for all of the different vouchers that we had. Is, I was just shocked of how many that we, that we make out every, mm -hmm. every month. Yeah, for, uh, for these uh, supplemental type of things here with landlords, I'm mean, just uh, it was absolutely shocked. What are the uh, options for the landlord? The option for the landlord well, if the tenant is unable to come up with the extra money under the under the reduced money. reduced payment. Well. <laughs> The option is that the tenant will need to find a less expensive apartment. Okay, so, mm -hmm. so the tenant then would be the one to move. Yeah. And you know, we'll, we'll be notifying landlords mm -hmm. and they could renegotiate rents with the tenants to make it a little more affordable. That's yeah. certainly an option. There are, mm -hmm. There's at least one housing authority that is apparently unilaterally lowering their contract rents with the landlords. Mm -hmm. but we don't think we can do that. <laughs> but, you know, to, but to answer your question is, if there are any Section 8 tenant-based voucher participants that feel that this increase is going to be too severe on their monthly budget, then they have the option of contacting me uh, to inform me of such, and then I would work with them to try to find an alternative housing that is less expensive for them. Not a guarantee in a tight housing market for affordable yeah. mm -hmm. housing, but an option for that. Well, I remember, David, you talked about uh, the Section 8 voucher being attractive to landlords because payment is reliable. Mm. It may not be as much as you want it to be, but it's reliably still there. Right. And this will be less payment, but still reliably there. Mm -hmm. So they like to do that. So, yes. A, a, a good paying tenant is, is quite an asset. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, there were several steps that we needed to look at before we got to this next to last step. And just to share with you what those are, and I need to let Hutt know this in my request for the waiver, 
is looking at increasing our effort in income matching, anti-fraud efforts. We're all over that every day. We're ensuring accurate utility allowances. Uh, we haven't absorbed, in other words, we haven't taken over the funding of someone coming from another jurisdiction to Brattleboro, which is again absorbing a port. Uh, we, uh, the last absorption we, we uh, took on was two years ago, uh, performing more frequent interim re-examinations and looking at household income. That's ongoing with us anyway, that's part of our Section 8 policy. Uh, we looked at the concept of a minimum rent, but we have but, but three participants in this program with zero incomes. So for our laborers and having to chase after and looking to make sure that their reporting income for a $50 a month increase is not worth the effort. Uh, that trade-off. Uh, stop our voucher issuances. Folks, I haven't issued a voucher. The last one I issued was nine months ago. So I can't pull those back because no one is out looking, we looked at the subsidy standard, that being the bedroom size in comparison to the household size. That was tight, so there wasn't any, any room to uh, make adjustments there. And then the next step is to review our payment standards, and that's where we are right. Mm -hmm. How long have you been in that state? Eight plus? Yeah, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. time flies. Um, <laughs> But I have to say that David um, and then Mary coming on board really, really run a very, very tight program. It's a really excellent Section 8 program. I mean, it's been a, they've been a high performer um, every year that we've been assessed under the HUD um, Section 8 assessment. And as David just said, they, he really is on top of all of this. So there's just, we want to, we wouldn't bring this to you if we, if I didn't have confidence that they really turned over every stone and continue to. Um, I mean, I think David runs a really excellent program. And, um, it's going to be a whole different way of doing business, isn't it, for you, Dave? Absolutely. So this is a, this is Absolutely. really amazing. Company. Yeah. Wow. And this isn't just this year, folks. Yeah. You know, yeah. This yeah. is the next ten years. Yeah. Well, the next two for sure. Exactly. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> let's for sure. be up to After that, <clears throat> that, that doesn't make the next two years any easier to face. Mm -hmm. uh, may I ask a question? Okay. Could you walk me through how you arrived at the first in, first out basis? Or is that not a good question? No. I, um, it's either first in, first out, or last in, first out. Mm -hmm. um, anything else, I think, would um, be dangerously dancing on the edge of fair housing. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. So you have to find a, a non-discriminatory basis on which you are going to be making a decision that you are going to be rewarding people. Mm -hmm. And we and other housing authorities uh, are going to the first in, first out. So it's generally what the housing authorities in Vermont are doing. Vermont State Housing Authority already has this policy in place. So it was in keeping with other okay. housing authorities. And uh, I think the, the basis of it is to say, if you've been on the program, for a very long time, um, relative to people that got a voucher nine months ago mm -hmm. and have just come into the program and just started to be stabilized. <clears throat> um, you've been on the program for X number of years and therefore had that benefit. Now we need to start reducing the number of people that have that benefit and so we're going to start with the people that have had it the longest, mm -hmm. not the people that just got their housing yeah. you know, okay. nine months ago. And I think in terms of our landlords, uh, probably the longer term Section 8 folks have uh, established more of a relationship with their landlord and can probably, with David's help if need be, work something out. Mm -hmm. um, 
and are in a better position than a newer person mm -hmm. on the board. Mm -hmm. okay. So that was really no, in my opinion, there's no good way to do it. So <coughs> I wanted to understand what? No, there is absolutely no. <laughs> I wanted to understand how, mm -hmm. how we came to that. Yeah. And Marshall, just to assure you all my choices would have violated fair housing, so that was one of those rocks. Yes, yeah. everyone. Well, boy, you get this angle, you get that one, you get that one, you get that one, you get the blue was, eyes, brown nose. Yeah, he was down there, and what if we do this? And I kept going, fair housing. <laughs> I said, nope, fair house. Yeah, okay. Are you so, going to run out of different sources when people start coming back looking for you to find a cheaper way that you can find them ways to make their rent? I'm, uh, I'm just wondering here if you're, you're, you're just going to get inundated. Yeah, this. but you know, I, I look at the, the pool of landlords they're under contract with, and we're really We've got a great group of landlords in Brattleboro. So I think all of those landlords would be willing to work with us and the mm -hmm. tenant to continue their house. Good. That's yeah. a good answer. Yeah. 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 I think that's true. And um, there, on this page, there are some of the mechanics that will go into this. Yeah. Um, but just so that you know, one of the um, other things that we've talked about quite a bit is, um, well, would we raise the payment standard again if we lower it? And certainly if we took people off, would we, how would we handle that? Um, and the answer is that if we get to a place where we see a reliable uh, future funding that looks more than looks, that is truly going to be stable, um, then by all means mm -hmm. we will begin to you know, undo this. Um, now one of the suggestions that I think was a really good one is that the people, if we do have to go to the second position, which is actually remove people, they would go back on the waiting list with their original date. Mm. of application. Mm. So that means they're first in line to get vouchers mm. as soon as we start, if we can lease them out. Yeah. So not only is it first in, first out, mm. but it's also then those people go to the top of the list. Mm -hmm. That's Which, a good way of doing it. Yeah, I thought that was a very good suggestion. Um, but, you know, determine a reliable, stable, secure funding mm. future right now that's pretty tough to do, so um, we think this is the best way to go. Well, I want to thank you people. You've done a lot of work. Mm -hmm. you, you've helped us make a decision, or I think we're going to make a decision. That's the best we can do. And you've done all the soul searching and laying awake at nights trying to figure out how to make things work. So thank you very much. Very fine. We're, uh, uh, well, if you're comfortable and want to act on these resolutions now, that's I was that would be good. just going to make the motion okay. that we adopt the resolution number one and resolution okay. number two that have been placed before us dealing with tenant based rental assistance. I will second that. Is it seconded? Yes, yes. Yeah, Janice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, any, any further discussion on this? Um, I will just add um, that the Public Housing Authority directors are going to be sending a letter to uh, the governor and the legislative bodies and also issuing a press release explaining what is happening across the state and mm -hmm. what this is pretty much, this is where everybody is going, um, mm -hmm. but we thought that it would be good to uh, to do that with one voice as the oh, housing yeah. authorities and, and and then hopefully people can understand what that total impact is mm -hmm. on the month. It's in excess of 3,000 Section 8 vouchers. Mm -hmm. So it's not a small matter. Mm -hmm. 
Council, while we're on the subject, there are going to be a couple of statements the board will need to make because there needs to be some additions to our Section 8 Administrative Plan and your adopting Resolution 1 and 2. And that was on the attachment along page stating that the board uh, approves notice to the family for the admin plan should the BHA need to decrease payment standards to insufficient funding from HUD, the BHA will give participants no more than a 60-day written advance notice of the action. And the second statement is if federal action results in future financial stability to the Housing Choice Voucher Tenant Based Voucher Program. Based on the BHA budget analysis, the BHA will increase the payment standard beginning of the month following BHA's determination. So if you all agree to that, we can, can you that. explain that. Can you explain that in a simple way? Because I don't. Um, the first uh, is just confirming that there will be a 60-day notice of the decrease in the payment standard. And the second is indicating on the conditions under which uh, the staff might bring a recommendation to increase the payment standard back to the board. Mm -hmm. If the money comes back. And, uh, if, if we have a reliable, stable, future funding picture from the federal government, then we would love to raise our payment standards. Question, uh, are the uh, C and D part of Resolution 1, C being the BHA will limit this rent, rent burden of any household to no more than 50% of their adjusted monthly income as a result of following this uh, lowering of payment standards. And D, if the request for a regulatory waiver is approved by HUD, BHA will implement the lower payment standard immediately and notify all uh, housing tourist voucher tenants, based participants in writing at least 30 days in advance of the change. Those These are part of the resolution. They are part. Yes. 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 So that's all part of Resolution 1. Yes. Right, yes. The, the two items that David read are the actual language that will need to be put into the Section 8 okay. Administrative Plan. So we're getting your approval in advance and bringing mm -hmm. that to you. <clears throat> C and D were pieces that I mentioned before that right. are part of this whole reduction of the payment. I didn't know whether they had to be included formally as language in that or not. Um, we are we under we understand that they are part of the change in the payment standard. Should we make mention of that in the uh, motion? Yes. Um, I'm not quite sure how to word it, but maybe we could just I could make a friendly amendment to my own motion. Oh, that's Having lived through all sorts of bad stuff, simply that uh, resolution one, resolution two is presented plus the attached supporting documents. Is that we okay have to do a friendly second. second. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Oh, Keep it friendly. All right. <laughs> um, so. Uh, Resolution number one will include, to include items uh, one C and D as presented, and I can actually put those into the written resolution. Okay. Okay. And then resolution two, um, would be B and C. Mm -hmm. So two, B and C. So these resolutions, yep. when I write them, will include okay. those two sections of each resolution. Mm -hmm. Good. Good. Are we ready for the question? Yes. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 
Move to carry. No. Chris, you said there will be a letter going from the, to the state government. Yeah. Will copies of that letter be available so that you can send one to the town offices, either directed either to the uh, town manager or to the board of selectmen, and say this is what we are changing, and that, as explained in the letter that goes to it's going to the state. Uh, which letter are you? Okay, the one that's explaining to the governor the actions that that the housing authorities have taken. Yes. So I mean, the joint letter will go to you immediately. Okay. I'll email it right away. Okay. Yeah. And then a copy of that would be made available to the town. I can certainly. I, I think it would be send appropriate. It, it would to the town. town. Yeah. 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 Because there are likely to be questions. I mean. A lot of people are going to going to be aware of what we've done, but I think it's important that we keep the town notified as well. Why don't I um, send an email tomorrow to the okay. town manager okay. and just say these are the two resolutions that mm -hmm. the board adopted, and um, certainly if the board wants you to come to visit them mm -hmm. or. Mm -hmm. um, Bar wants to have a long conversation. Let us know. Yeah. Good enough. Yeah. Serious, and we're we're happy to. We'd keep them in the loop at the same Absolutely. time. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I will do that. Um, this financial review you gave us, Mary, uh, this this sheet and another packet that we have right here. Do you, anything you wanted to mention on that, on the financial review? Uh, not, that's for executive session. Oh, okay. Yeah, all right. All right. Yeah. Just the um, um, check. I'll, I'll just leave it out for anything we'll talk about. Here we go. Check signing. Tom, you're, you're handling the month of March? Well, it's almost well, over. I know it's been doing just a day or two. Chris in April, Janet in May, yes, and I, in June. I have a conflict on May 3rd, so I would, it's a, a five Friday month, so I'll thank you very just, much. Just, okay. just all right, I will be more oh, than okay. happy. I was going to say, just remind me at our April meeting. That no, no, well, no, I'm just going really to be happy with that. Thank you very much. Um, other business? Anybody else have any other business? Oh, I do. I apologize. I have uh, two items. Mm -hmm. One, just informational. Just uh, we got a newsletter in today that just uh, the sequestration. Just mm -hmm. um, a little more information. But most importantly, uh, you take all of um, Just yeah, it should be fine. I wanted to let you know that. Um, sure. Yes. If there's pictures, there's one that is. Okay. Just the other one. All right. I've got a copy of the whole video. This is just more news from today about where the numbers are at. Um, most importantly, I wanted to tell you about this. Mm -hmm. um, As you know, we have a group of graduate students from the Harvard uh, Graduate School working with us on the uh, Melrose rehousing project. Mm -hmm. And um, they are, their project is called a Community Development Project, the CDP. Got that? Um, and we have given them a great list of folks. They're coming this Friday and Saturday. Mm -hmm. uh, they're going to be interviewing a wide range of people both days and have set up this um, session on Saturday to meet with the Melrose residents. You all are very well invited to attend um, to talk about um, new residences, services, what just to get the conversation started again 
it's been in a lull while we've been uh, getting ourselves organized and you know, doing all that good stuff. Um, so I think this is great, a great way to start mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. community involvement. They'll be meeting with the uh, West Brattleboro Association people and town people. Just gave them a whole long list of folks to contact. So I just want to let you know about it and know that you were invited and that gives uh, this we're very fortunate to have this group working with us. Um, we were, um, they were sent to us, we were sent to them via uh, Susan Mittner, who was the um, uh, Irene Zarina in the state government for a while. She's a graduate of this program and knew that they had the, these, um, in, you know, these kinds of projects going and said, gee, you know, we've got this group in Brattleboro and so we've been working on hooking up and think that this will make a great program, a great project for them and a really, really excellent um, piece of work for us in terms of having community conversations around where are we going to go, what's it going to look like, the whole, um, the whole of this big undertaking. So, so that's okay. it. Thank you. Anybody have any uh, anything else to come before the meeting? If not, I would like to close the meeting and uh, go into executive session. So move. Second. So that lasted just about the right length of time, Mary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you have to take a vote? Mm -hmm. We need to vote. Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Okay. Who uh, is part of the uh, Marshall and mm -hmm. seconded by Tom. All in favor? Aye. Aye. No opposed? We are now in the executive session. Okay, great.